Brandon? Uh, he will not play. It's, uh, he still hadn't done anything yet at practice. <coughs> you guys are at the proper distance away from me. I will give you the crud. I'm going to try to coach today from the same distance. Uh, he has not uh, done anything five on five, half court, and doesn't have done anything except shoot. Roy, after the game Tuesday, you made mention of you coaching the guys to do something and then the games that not mm-hmm. happening. You've mentioned that before. Yeah. Uh, can you explain that a little bit more in terms of what's going on there? Well, it's just, uh, you know, I'm so daggum gun shy about least gifted. It's the stupidest freaking thing in history. Uh, I'm not blaming the kids. The way I said it was I haven't been able to get them to do the things that we ask them to do, and they do sometimes in practice. Now, if anybody wants to take a exception, that I'm close to the line of telling everybody to go take a flying leap, so I'm okay. But I'll give you an example. Uh, 79 practices. We have fast break drill number three. It's everybody. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody comes down the middle of the court, comes to a stop, makes a bounce pass. Coach Frederick is standing there. And the reason we do it is to teach you not to charge. Come to a stop at the free throw line. And not picking on anybody. But Armando ran over the guy. In 79 practices, we've done it every single day. So that's an example right there. And again, that's not picking Armando. You just asked about it. But uh, So I guess I've got to do it twice in every practice. Uh, but I haven't been able to get them to take the things directly related to basketball, uh, what we do in practice and do successfully. Coach Frederick hadn't had gotten a bloody nose yet this year. And nobody's need him in the groin. Nobody's busted his lip. Everybody's come to a stop. And so it is just something very simple like that. We. We work on three on two transition, four on three, five on four, and we get picked up better in practice than we do in the games. And Coach Smith used to call it game slippage, but we've had more instances of that uh, with this team. But if you go back and look at it, what, how would you describe this team compared to most of our teams with the exception of 2006? Uh, I guess I'd have to think hard, but maybe the most inexperienced team I've ever coached. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about, something similar to that, like that. Now, if somebody picks up on something like that and say, I'm blaming the kids, and this you will be witness to one thing, the last freaking press conference I ever have, because that's not what I'm saying. No, not to get into the... Is that pretty fair? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not to get into the, the psychology aspect yeah. of it, but you mentioned the inexperience. You've yeah. had a ton of injuries, you have guys in and out. Uh, I'm sure confidence can be tested with the way mm-hmm. things have gone. Yeah. Does all that kind of factor in? Yeah, I think so. And in the, the competitiveness, uh, what drove – I mean, we won a championship in 05, 09, and 17. And the team that I enjoyed coaching the most may have been 06 because David Noel was on break, so he was upstairs this morning. and uh, uh, He was our – uh, leading returning scorer, I think, at like 3.9. You can look it up. I don't like to go by what I say. Uh, but uh, uh, Tyler Hansrow himself brought such a level of competitiveness in every possession, every loose ball, every drill that people fed off of that. David Noel, and I still say this, and I've said it consistently since 2006, and it never changed. That I said maybe he's the best leader that I've ever had on any one of my teams that he just said, come on, guys, let's do what we're told to do and let's do it and let's play hard and everything's going to be all right. I mean, he was just off the charts, so good. Marcus Page was a great, great leader, but Joel Berry was a great leader by example. But uh, So you can use all those things, confidence, uh, experience, uh, lack of injuries or preponderance of injuries. Uh, uh, and I think... That team, I think we changed the lineup once during the year, and I just made a change myself, you know, because I wanted to get Wes Miller in there to get a little more outside shooting and took out, I think, uh, I think it was Marcus Kenyard, I think. First game we started three freshmen, Bobby Tyler and Marcus with David Noel and uh, uh, Ray Sean Terry. So it was a guy that came here on a football scholarship and David Noel. The guy who was second team All-State and Ray Sean Terry and three freshmen. 
but they competed their buns off every night at a high, high level. But I think so, you know, you can add all those teams, but I mean, I, all those things. But I did. That was a fun team to coach because it was, you know, they were looking at you with their eyes wide open and like a little dog wants somebody to teach me something kind of thing. And uh, that was really a fun, fun team, which probably on par, maybe even less experience, because at least we have uh, Garrison uh, that started, whereas David, I don't think David ever started a game. Uh, but it, it's it's a combination of things. If that old saying, if I knew if it was just one thing, I think between me and Coach Robinson and Hubert and Brad and everybody, we would have figured it out if it, it was just one thing. But the kids want it. Uh, there's, I want them to want it desperately. And, but they do want it. And, you know, if people are going to make it out that I'm blaming the kids, they're idiots. So you dig a little deeper into the, <coughs> into the psychology of it. Uh, Remember I told you guys I should have majored in psychology. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> a few times here. But how much more difficult does it get for these kids to prepare as the losing continues? Uh-huh. And, and how challenged are you to maybe change the way you communicate to them a little bit? Yeah, I think it is something that we think is uh, staff about every single day. And I'm, uh, I'm just old school with go to work and do the job, go to work and do the job, try to get better. And uh, that's what we've talked about for the last month is let's try to get better today. And I'm talking about in practice, we're going to try to get better uh, this afternoon in practice. And that's the way I've chosen to do it. To, and, you know, like I said, we don't tell you guys everything. I, uh, first year at Kansas, we had a big losing streak because we got down to eight scholarship players at one time. And uh, we brought them in and watched a movie on Friday night, watched Rocky Three and Hoosiers, and it didn't work. But we tried everything. So this year I brought them in, and we watched a movie on Friday night and a couple of weeks ago, and it didn't work either. But, uh, yeah, you try all kinds of different things But because the kids, they do want to. I even said something the other night in a huddle that, <clears throat> you know, we Walker just didn't hit – uh, Garrison quite right overhead when he had a layup. And then Cole threw it away when Justin broke wide open out of the basket. And then uh, Leakey got stripped on the layup. And then I said, boy, guys, just think how much fun this game would be if Cole's three had gone in. Didn't even say anything about those other previous plays because if his three had gone in, it would have given us a nine-point lead. Nine, we would only be down nine, and then we got the ball back and uh, still down 12, but it would have been down nine half the ball. And I said somebody how much fun this would be. And I looked at Cole, but I know you didn't miss it on, you know, I've never had a player intentionally miss a shot. But it's just that fine line that you can get if you can just get over the hump a little bit. There's no telling how much more confidence you have in that you can come back. And, uh, you know, I've tried everything so far that I know of. That doesn't mean I'm going to try to figure out something else, though, too. Is there, is there a update on Garrison Brooks's eye and clip and stuff? He, uh, he practiced <coughs> yesterday. Uh, we didn't hold him out of anything. Uh, said the lip feels fine. He's no pain in his eye, and he can see better. It doesn't mean he can – I mean, I go like this, and he does say three instead of five, but that's as, as good as I've gotten him so far. But uh, So it's better, yeah. So he's still aware of the goggles? Pardon? Is he still unaware of the goggles, probably? Uh, I hope so. I mean, you think, guys, he's – had the same injury, the same eye three times. And so just protection. I think Doug wants him to, I want him to. And so far he hadn't said he didn't want to. You know, but you never can tell what kid's going to do. I mean, Tyler Hansrow wore the goggles and all of a sudden first half of the Michigan State game threw him off, threw him at the bench. I think he's trying to hit me. Uh, but uh, so it's got to be what they're comfortable with too. What well, just seemed like watching Garrison the other night after almost every play, he was yeah. taking them on and off, putting them back to the bench, putting them back on. Yeah, it was frustrating for him because yeah. you know it, if you look at him, he's been a very confident player scoring around the basket, and then in the first part of that game, he looked very unconfident. He didn't look very secure. Not very. Uh, he was bothered by the goggles. I think it's everybody could see that. So. And I'm hopeful that uh, as we made him keep him on in practice all day yesterday, too. <coughs> Coach, uh, I know you're not on social media yourself, but there seems to be an uptick in the amount of, kind of cyberbullying, hate comments with your players on social media. Brandon Robinson talked about it in Carolina Insider Pod in conversations I've had with Andrew. He said he had to delete his social media, it got so bad. 
has this been addressed to you and kind of how do you deal with this with the nature of the season? It hasn't been addressed. This is the first that I've heard about it, you know. Um, is that something similar to what Tommy is oh mm-hmm. yeah, it's that, yeah, I mean you know, it's just you, you imagine what I would be reading if I were to look my own stuff up now. You know, so I don't look at it. I mean what's that? <laughs> they would have fired you a bunch of times. Oh yeah, I mean, that's 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 what it is and just gotta live with it. But uh several years ago we stopped taking calls on my radio show. And the reason we stopped taking calls is because I get fired up. And then I said one day, I said, guys, we don't even know if there's a real Carolina fans. This may be Duke or State, somebody else's fans is trying to get me fired up or something like that. So we stopped taking calls. And it's the way I look at that, it might be North Carolina fans. And they have the right. They might be saying, be, be saying something bad about me, but I don't read it. But it also could be somebody else saying some negative things, just trying to bait our players or whatever. But uh, it's today's world. You know, the day that... Uh, Bubba Cunningham or uh, the Chancellor walk in and tell me they're not pleased with the job I'm doing or something or I'll worry. But if you think I worry about what some guy or girl or whatever puts on Twitter, twat, whatever it is, uh, uh, I'm not going there, guys. God almighty. The best, uh, I understand your question, son. I'm trying to give you a big picture, okay? I do not know anything about it. If I talk to them about it, I must just tell them to leave it alone. I mean, you know, you may think I'm a great coach. You may think I suck. It's not going to make any difference without work on it in practice today. So that's what I would tell them. The funniest thing I've ever heard in my life, I'm driving through Georgia on a recruiting trip, and Hugh Durham's radio show was on. He was the coach at Georgia. And the uh, guy was complaining about his coaching, and he asked me, he said, what do you do? Are you a plumber? That every time you get down to do your job, you show the crack of your rear end? You know, and I'm thinking, God Almighty, you know, that was a, I, I almost wrecked. You know, so it's uh, you can't get too upset. I mean, it, I don't know who they are, and uh, but our players. Uh, since you said it, I'll ask uh, Eric and our guys that monitor the stuff. But I did see Tommy's comments, and Tommy's right. I mean, they, you know, they have the right to say things, but come on, everybody criticizes. I'll use Garrison. Everybody criticizes Garrison. Find somebody that's as good a basketball player as he is at criticizing. You know, if Michael Jordan criticizes him, maybe I'll say something. But seriously, so uh, if, if what I'm hearing from you is that our players are being criticized, so am I. You know, and you got to go on. It's today's world. I'll tell them to cut the stuff off, quit looking at it, quit being involved. And, and you know what? I'm serious. I have never read one thing. I don't, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I haven't even had my phone with me. Most of the time I leave in the car during the day. But uh, if I'm going to get upset over what somebody says about me, you know, that's, that's not going to be me. I'm going to work every day, working as hard as I possibly can. Nobody will ever, ever say that Roy Williams didn't give them everything he had. And so, you know, it's, if you're thinking that I should do something, I, uh, I thought Tommy, I left Tommy a message and just – Told him I enjoyed his press conference kind of thing, but I think they were specifically pointing at one player. The way I understand it, do you guys know? Yeah. Right. So does that answer your question or not? Yeah, I was more just talking kind of like on the on the mental health side of things. Just you ever see that kind of way on somebody? I can guarantee you something else. I'm not going to let somebody think I'm going wacko just because what I read or you know, what somebody's saying on some. Twitter twat, whatever it is, you know, that kind of thing. But we will talk to them, and, and we do already. We monitor it already. It's it's not nuclear science. Roy, you talked about the players wanting it so desperately. Is there a danger? Well, I said I want it desperately. You want it. Yeah. Is there a danger of them wanting it so desperately mm-hmm. they try too hard, mm-hmm. do things that are, that are not part of their game? Yeah, they think about result instead of playing the game. I guarantee you some of our players that went to the free throw line at the end of the Duke game were worried about result. You can't shoot the ball worried about result. you got to shoot the ball thinking about technique. I've used it 100 times. Tiger Woods doesn't go take it back and, God, i got to knock this one three feet from the hole for 190 yards. God Almighty. You know, you got to think of technique. But I really do believe that uh, not just this team, every team. Uh, I think they start thinking sometimes and it's the way you – 
make sure you got to handle stress is not think of result, just think of technique. Uh, I think that it's my big message to free throw shooters all the time because it's uh, you have time there. You don't have time when you jump shot. You'll still have some negative thoughts. But free throw shooting, you start to have negative thoughts because you think about the result. And so I tell them, all right, just think of one checkpoint. All right, follow through. So when you shoot a free throw, just make sure you follow through. Oh, it went in. Or, oh, it missed. But think in that terms as opposed to a result. When you start becoming result processing, while you're doing something, I think it really is difficult for you. And that's a little bit about what you, I think you're talking about there, desperately wanting it so much because they're thinking about results to the play in. Going back to the psychology thing, Justin said after the I told you I didn't major in psychology. You guys asked me all the psychological questions. I said I didn't. Major. Yeah. With this group in here, you guys are like me. We're in bad shape. Justin said after the Duke game that when he was asked about the free throw issues, that when it's harder to make a free throw when the guy that shot him before you missed. Yeah. How much are you having to coach that psychology right now? I think we're trying to coach every possession, every pass, every dribble more than I ever have in my entire life. But I'm not going to sit back and say, well, let's just let it ride, you know, that kind of thing. But I think, and I, I always, it's never bothered me. I'm serious. Uh, at one time, in my, I, didn't never, I never thought I was the best shooter. But there was one time in my life I thought I could putt better than most guys on the tour. And then guys could miss 21 in a row. And they had to bother me. I'd make an next one, make no difference. And I really, Dana Quigley one time got in my golf bag and took my putter and said, no basketball coach should be able to putt like he does. And, you know, it didn't bother me. I still will make a sucker more than he was. And, uh, but, yes, I think that uh, you start thinking about, well, the last guy did this or that or whatever. And, that's what's so special about B Rob over at State. I mean, because Christian missed two, Garrison missed four, and B Rob made five in a row. With, with, with Virginia, offensive efficiency is, the defense is doing what it normally does, but the offensive efficiency is significantly down from last year. Obviously, a lot of talent went out the door. How different of an offensive team are they, and what do they think they do best with this particular group? Well, I think they do the best. Tony still coaches the heck out of them on the defensive end of the floor. That's what they hang their hat on. And so they have that security blanket of how well they play defensively. Uh, they still run in similar offense. They do a few things differently, but they don't have a guy that will jump up from a corner, a dead corner behind the backboard like Kyle Guy and make it, or they don't have a guy that – go up there and got to make, talking about pressure, stress. Always think about having to make three free throws to get to the national championship. I mean, it had come on. And, uh, but uh, Jerome and Kyle and DeAndre, those guys just were so confident that they carried them through some tough times. I mean, they had a chance to lose maybe the last two or maybe the last three or maybe the last four they played last year. But they were confident enough to, to get it done. So they, they don't have that confidence Except for, my, my, is it Diakate or Di, Diakite? Okay. I just call him Big Fella. Uh, and he knows that too. But uh, uh, Diakite making that big jump shot last year, it's given him a great deal of confidence that he can do some things. Uh, so you have him and you have Clark, who made a big time play in the, I think that was the semifinals last year. You know, because a lot of guys would have seen the clock and would try to throw it from 60 feet, and he, Tried to get one more pass in and get a 10-footer. Uh, so I think that really helps them. Uh, Huff played some for them last year, too. But it is, I mean, with that uh, Jerome and uh, Kyle and uh, DeAndre, they're not as efficient individual, individually offensively. But I just looked when I came in here, you know, they're shooting 41%. Well, we're shooting 40. You know, we're both shooting 40, 41. But our problem is they're giving up 36 and we're giving up 41.4. You know, so they're still hanging their hat on the defensive end of the floor. And they made some uh, against us up there. And I heard Chris Mack say the other day, what's this about not being able to shoot it so well? And a uh, uh, young kid for them, uh, for Virginia, uh, Wol somebody's pronounced his name. Okay, Tom Thomas. <laughs> Thomas made, what was it, six threes or seven threes against seven threes against – and I remember Chris saying, yeah, I thought they couldn't shoot. You know, and then uh, Statman made some, Casey made some against us up there. 
Braxton's been around a long time and very experienced. So uh, we don't we we don't take anybody lightly, especially somebody who's already beaten us. You know, so we understand that part of it. Coach, a couple uh, you more. Mentioned Miller, uh, you mentioned Walker Miller earlier. Pardon? You mentioned Walker Miller earlier, and he's playing. I think I guess ahead of Brandon Huffman. What's the reasoning there for going with Walker? Brandon couldn't play the other night. His knee was bothered. He wasn't going to play if I if I had to at the end. I would have played four people, and uh, uh, so that's the reason that Walker got all that time, but Walker's been doing some better things in practice and perhaps, uh, and the reason I really do say it, and I think you'll understand, perhaps he has moved in front of Huff. It just depends on what I think I need at that specific moment. If I want a guy who's probably going to block a shot or I want a guy who's going to be sound fundamentally on the defensive end of the floor and maybe take a charge, so it depends. But Huff was, he was not available against Wake Forest. Well, well last night, watched the, uh, when I was watching the first half last night, I thought, oh, my gosh, we were so bad. And, and they weren't very good either in the first half, but they made more than we did. And in the second half, we got worse, and they got a little better. Uh, taking care of the basketball and shooting a decent percentage against Virginia is always difficult shooting good percentage because they're going to challenge every shot and they're going to try to take away your second shot opportunities. And they don't get out in the lanes and they don't press full court, but they, they're after you enough that you turn the ball over against them. I think that uh, uh, we can shoot the ball, needless to say, better than we did up there, and hopefully we'll rebound the ball better. Uh, we still make some silly turnovers. I think uh, even in the Duke game, what we have 16 or 18, something like that against Duke, I mean, it's a high possession game, and it went to overtime, so it was 45 minutes. But uh, we've got to cut back everything. And, you know, I think sometimes in practice I say, all right, we're getting it now, and we're getting a little better in every phase. But uh, we'll have to play the game tomorrow to see. Coach, what's the motivation for your team these last few weeks this season? What is the, what's the motivation for your team these last few weeks? I hope it's to play better basketball. I mean, you know, I haven't seen any signs of them giving up. And if they're going to, just don't even come to practice. Just you still got your scholarship. If you're not going to come out there and do the best you can, don't even come. And I am. It's the, the motivation to me is to get better, to get better. And then who knows what might happen at the end? You know, you just got to try to keep getting better every single day. And uh, I guess you know. I mean, everybody's talking about the tournament. I'm just trying to get better every single day. I mean. It would be hard for us to make the tournament, I guess, as an at-large team, but we're trying to get better every single day is what we're trying to do.